we're going to analyze this function, x cubed minus 3x. First, try to graph this function. Graph it. Try to graph it without using any graphing website. Try to analyze it using x-intercept and then find y-intercept and plug in your points. To find x-intercept, set your y equal to zero and solve for x. So my y or f of x are the same thing. x cubed minus 3x is equal to zero. Factor x. So you have x parenthesis x squared minus 3 equal to zero. When this is equal to zero, it means that x is equal to zero. x squared minus 3 is zero. x squared minus 3 is zero. It means that x squared is 3. Remember that x squared is 3 or x is plus minus square root of 3. We end up having 3x intercept. One of them is 0. The other one is a square root of 3. And the other one is negative square root of 3. These are your x intercepts. Find y intercept as well. Find y intercept. To find y intercept is easy. Set x equal to zero, solve for y. Well, when my x is zero, x minus x cubed minus two x becomes zero. So y or f of x is equal to zero. Zero to the third minus three times zero, zero minus zero, or just zero. So your y intercept is at the origin. I say, okay. I can graph some part of this function. Here we go. So I have square root of 3. I have negative square root of 3. And I have 0. But what else? Let us plug in more points. Plug in more points. If you have time, plug in 10 points x and y. So far, I know if I plug in 0 for my x, my y is 0. I'm not going to plug those in again. I'm going to plug in some values in between and before. Suppose I plug in negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 into this function, I get negative 2 to the third, which is negative 8, minus 3 times negative 2 plus 6. This is going to be negative so negative 2 and negative 2. Negative 2 and negative 2 roughly down here. If I plug in negative 1, what do I get? Negative 1 to the third is negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So here, if I plug in negative 1, I get a positive 2. Okay, take a look at this. So far, I have these three points. It means that if I connect these, it behaves like this. I know at zero, I have a zero. So I can go down here. So let me plug in some values like one here. If I plug in one, I get one to the third, which is one minus two or negative two. Ooh, at one, I have negative two, which is down here. Then I know at uh, negative square root of three, I have a zero and at positive square root of 3, I have another 0. So it moves up. And you can continue. You can plug in more values. The behavior is like this. So what's the meaning of that? It says, hey, from negative infinity to negative 1, you have an increasing function. From negative infinity to negative 1, y values are increasing. Well, from negative 1 to 1, my function is decreasing. My y values are decreasing. The function is represented by y values. So from negative 1 to 1, the function is decreasing. From 1 to positive infinity, 
my function is increasing. From one to positive infinity, my y values start increasing, going up. So decreasing and then one to positive infinity, increasing. So this is the behavior of this function x cubed to minus 3x. Again, on x-axis from negative infinity, from a very small number to negative one, the function is increasing. The y values are getting larger and larger from negative one to one. My y values are getting smaller. The function is represented by y values, not x values. From one to positive infinity, the y values or the function are getting larger and larger.